Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Bandicow in Farming Simulator 15 or however I usually introduce this. I think it's different every time around so it doesn't really matter. Um, today we're going to be doing some tedding and wind drawing on uh, meadow number 3. But I came, I, I started the recording a bit earlier than I, I, I normally would have because there are a few things I want to talk about. Um, well, well, one thing in particular before I get going on work. Actually, two. Um, first, and kind of most important for the video, I have discovered the source of my frame rate issues. And the source of my frame rate issues was I was running the game in windowed mode and it didn't like it. Now, up until now, windowed mode has been something you had to enable in the XML. So, the game not running particularly well in windowed, I can deal with. You know, 2013, I edited the XML so I could run in windowed mode. There were some issues. There are always going to be issues when you do something that isn't entirely supposed to be done. So I can deal with it. But for FarmSim 15, Giants enabled the option in the options menu. And the game runs like crap with um, windowed mode enabled. Now I'm just going to hit F2 here on my keyboard. And you can see I'm running at a solid 60 FPS now. Woo with screen t screen tearing only happens with VSync on? What? <sighs> I don't know. Um, yeah. If you have similar issues to what I had where the game just jams up on you, what you do is you take out a windowed mode and it fixes it. So I won't have any more lag by the looks of things. I literally did this five seconds before I, started before I started recording, and it fixed all the problems. There are apparently some weird issues where the... I wonder if that's supposed to happen. <laughs> um, anyway, that's the first thing I want to talk about. Uh, and I'm just going to rent the big tether. Can I rent it? Yes, I can. Uh, for... And oh, for an hour. So that was kind of the first issue, and I seem to have some weird graphics issues, probably caused by having adaptive VSync on, which I'll t I'll turn off um, after this episode. <laughs> the second thing, and it, it's a real bugbear for me, and I know. Um, by the time you see this, this will already have happened and it'll be out and you, know, you can complain all you like. But this is a real bugbear for me and I've seen a few modders um, get really, really annoyed by this. And the second thing is, Giants have announced a second DLC. The game isn't fixed yet and they've announced another DLC. This is a money grab. I'm probably going to get it because it's JCB but... Come on, guys, fix the game before you ask us to pay for more. G seriously. Like, the upside of it is, it's JCB, so they've clearly been listening to the community and looking at the, po the, the, the really popular mods. John Deere will never, ever allow Giants to make a DLC. Um, John Deere have Drive Green, which is terrible, but that's their game, and they're probably not going to let Giants make a John Deere DLC pack. JCB, I didn't think they'd do it, but um, they have allowed Giants to make a JCB DLC. And that's coming out uh, today. Yes, today actually. Because um, this is going live on April 2nd, and for the first time in history, I know when the video is going live, so I can say, yep, that's coming out today. Um, hopefully when this has gone up, this video goes up, patch 1.3 will also be arriving. Or will have arrived. Now I am recording on the 28th. Yes, Saturday, 28th of March. Um, it's actually quite early for me now. 
relatively speaking, it is just coming up to 11 a.m. Um, and I have watched the qualifying for the Malaysian Grand Prix, which, oh my God, some annoyances, but I'm not going to go into that here. I'm just, I'm just not because if I start talking Formula One, I'll just get enraged. Um, so yeah, Giants are bringing a second DLC for the game that isn't completely finished. I mean, the game is isn't completely finished. The DLC, I would hope, is. Um, one thing they are putting in the DLC that I've seen, I've had a look at. Well, one thing they have put in the DLC because by the time this uh, goes out, you'll. F It'll be after being arrived, and if you've pre-ordered it, more power to you. Um, I wouldn't advise you to do that, but I'll probably get it anyway. Because uh, one thing Giants have put into it is a skid steer loader, which skid steer in a game that has terrible driving physics. Well done, Giants. You're making fun of yourselves there. Um, but that's something that hasn't. Giants have never brought out a skid steer before, and, and it does seem like they're trying to open up um, new avenues for equipment and, and new things to do in the game, which, fair play Giants, that's what the game needs. But what the game needs more than more equipment is a working engine, and it doesn't have that at the moment. Um, what it needs what the game needs is the modding documentation to be released and that hasn't happened yet at least when I'm recording this it hasn't happened so I really really want Giants to um, get their act together and get the modding documentation out get what patch 1.3 out and for most importantly for patch 1.3 to have fixed all the issues with the game that's really the critical task for, for um, patch 1.3 uh, what else was there to talk about? Oh, yes. Um, I have been doing some tinkering and, and other than, you know, fixing the game at long last, where I can, I can play it without massive lag spikes every five minutes. And we're almost ten minutes into this episode with no problems. I might, I might even be able to up the graphics to Ultra. Um, or, f sorry, not ultra, because Giants don't believe in there being an ultra setting very high. Um, might be able to boost the graphics to that. I might do a test later on today. Um, off screen, I've been playing, well, some different games, and tinkering around with, um, things, the things that I like, and things that I used to like. And, what I have done is... Uh, over the past couple of days, I've got a PlayStation 2 emulator, uh, which you can argue on the legality of that however much you want, but I used to own a PS2, my sister has it now, and it's I literally only got it to play one game that this guy owned for it is broken. That game is Gran Turismo 4. Oh my god, the nostalgia is so high, and I forgot how just evil some of the license tests were in Gran Turismo mode. Um, I'm just playing that to kind of warm myself back up to it because I'm thinking of doing a series on it and I'm gonna do something um, I'm not gonna do it like differently to anybody else what I'm gonna do is um, I am gonna show the license tests this, these are my plans anyway um, I'm going to show the license tests, but I'm going to do one per video and show kind of how I failed as well because I'm going to try and go for not gold because I'm terrible. Um, I'm going to go for bronze on every test and I'm going to do all the licenses before I do any of the races. So I'm going to start a new game and, and Grand Turismo 4 and go for all the licenses. So there might be some pretty long breaks between episodes. Um, because one or two of the tests, um, if you've played Gran Turismo 4, or if you know somebody who has, just mention to them International A License Test 15. 
because that is one of the most evil, evil things any game company has ever done in a, a racing game. I'll, I'll specify. Um, to get to pass International A License Test 15 in Gran Turismo 4, you have to do a lap of the Nurburgring. Now, for those of you who don't follow motor racing or don't, don't know, the Nurburgring... Uh, I'll specify the Nurburgring Nordschleife. The Nurburgring Nordschleife is a 20 kilometer long racetrack in Germany with 100 and I believe it's 118 corners. Now you know that doesn't sound particularly evil. Oh, you have to do a lap of a really long racetrack. You know, it's doable. It is. Uh, the issue is you have to follow a pace car. The pace car is a Nissan Skyline uh, I think it's the 34 series Skyline GTR. Um, and the car they give you is faster than the Skyline. So Oh, and by the way, in Gran Turismo for the license tests, and this is a, a staple, you cannot have all four wheels off the track. Now, if you've got, say, two wheels on a rumble strip, that's fine. Well, two wheels on the grass, two wheels on a rumble strip. That's perfectly fine, Gran Turismo will allow that. All four wheels on the grass? Nope. You failed. Um hit the pace car which is the G GTR too hard you fail overtake the pace car you fail so um, they give you a car that's faster than the pace car to do a lap around a 20 kilometer long circuit that the gold time the, you know the gold standard is a nine minute lap now you can do if you do it really really well and just kind of take it a bit easy like I did I was playing it last night and I was just failing 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 so I decided to do one lap where I just kind of I I drove conservatively at times <laughs> the times that I usually failed I drove conservatively um around those places and I got a 908 9 minutes 8 seconds point 8 around you know 8 seconds over 20 kilometers not a lot of time um, so the goal time on that I could possibly do but some of the tests I mean it, it's just evil whoever designed that is evil and I like them um, but Gran, Tur Gran Turismo 4, um, I haven't, up on, well, until this week, I hadn't played it in, oh, you're kidding me, there is still lag. Um, not as much, but there is. I hadn't played Gran Turismo 4 for probably since 2006, 2005, 2006 I hadn't played it since. So I was a bit rusty to say the least. And um one of the great things about Gran Turismo. Even in the PS2 era. Um and here's the thing. PS2 era, known for well, it's old, so you wouldn't expect as many options in the game. Gran Turismo 4 has completely rebindable controls. Is a PS2 game most console games are today are just like well these are the controls deal with it looking at you Call of Duty um, but Gran Turismo 4 was just like okay here's what we think the controls should be um, if you don't like them well we'll give you the option to change them and uh, the emulator I'm using is god I can't remember the name of it at the moment um, 
but it's a PlayStation 2 emulator specifically and it supports Xbox controllers now if you pay attention during my videos you'll know that I use an Xbox controller to play farm sim I use a PDP Afterglow Xbox controller to be specific and the emulator I use not only supports Xbox controllers but allows me to bind up the keys however I want you know bind up controls however I want so I've bound acceleration brake as I do well because I'm used to it to the triggers well I bound R2 and L2 to the triggers I bound up the controls in the same manner as they were on the PS2 but in Gran Turismo I have rebound acceleration and brake from X and Square to um, L2 and R2 because they're the triggers, rebound gearing, I've rebound about half the controls just to suit me and to suit the way I play on Xbox so it does look like it's working relatively well um, still need to shake out the dust and get rid of the dust so I think maybe within the next month or so um, I'll start putting Gran Turismo videos up. Now it won't affect Farm Sim, don't worry. Gran Turismo is one of those games that um, I can play and play and play and play and play and not get bored of but there are some issues with it. Um, for one, and this is something that I will be doing but off screen because yeah, you'll find out when I explain for one, to get some of the cars, specifically the um, Formula One analog that's in the game, um, I know how to get it. I remember. I, oh my god, I remember how to get it. Because to get the Formula One analog, you have to do the Nurburgring 24 hours. Normally in games, when you see 24 hours, you think, oh well, they'll just do a scaled time thing where it's, you know, you have to race for, I don't know, half an hour and they'll scale time suitably. Gran Turismo labelled itself as the real driving simulator. And there's a reason they did that. Um if you speak to most sim racers who play the likes of iRacing, R-Factor, um, even NASCAR Racing 2003 despite the fact that it's really old they will say Gran Turismo's physics are in no way realistic which is, uh, you know, fine well, I can deal with that, it's, fun ga it's a fun game, it's supposed to be fun the Nürburgring 24 hours, the length of that race is in fact 24 hours in real time I did it on the PS2, and I'm really glad Gran Turismo 4 had this. They have B spec mode, which allows you to. Um, I know I'm talking about a completely different game, and I'm playing Farm Sim, but I'm teading. What do you expect? Um, this episode, by the way, is going to be as long as it needs to be. I don't care. I just want to get this Gran Turismo 4 stuff out of my head. Um, Gran Turismo 4, what they did was they introduced what's called B spec mode. And in B-Spec mode, what happens is the AI takes over the car. And you can tell it how fast it can go. What I did back in the day on the PS2 was I turned on the PS2, uh, booted up the Nürburgring 24 hours, wrote a note on a post-it, stuck it to the side of the PS2 saying, Doing long race, leave it on please. And I kid you not, I just put it in B-Spec mode for a day and let the uh, AI... I, I did the first stint. The first maybe half hour, 45 minutes. And I just left the PS2 running with the Nürburgring 24 hours happening. I came back eventually and hey, I won the race. Well done, me. All me and absolutely no AI help that did almost the entire race. Um, but the only reason I did it was for that Formula 1 car, because it was the best car in the game. Um, I do have some good memories with that, with Gran Turismo 4. One of my favourite gaming moments happened, and this is something that really... Gran Turismo is a sandbox at heart. 
I mean, yeah, they've got all the races that, oh, well, you have to do this and this and this and this with this car from this era uh, with this body kit and whatever. But what I did was I just invented my own things that I had to do. <coughs> and one of them was I had a, I think it was a Sauber C9 um, as it was then GT1 prototype. Um... When it, well, when it was built, now it's just plain called a prototype. And what I did was, I realized that car could be geared up on the maximum speed test. I realized it could potentially be geared up to go 300 miles an hour, or I think it, in, I think it was 400 kilometers an hour. I want to say, four or five hundred kilometers an hour. Um. So I, I spent probably about three weeks um, gearing the cars in a specific way and gradually getting the time, you know, getting the speed up and up and up and up and then it, I screwed up and went back down and I got angry at myself for doing that. But um, the day I hit 300 miles an hour in that car, I remember I just grabbed my pillow because I was like, what, 12, 11, 12, I grabbed my pillow and screamed into it, my parents thought something horrible had happened, no, I was just absolutely delighted because I'd hit the goal I was working towards for the past month, and um, that's one of my all-time favourite moments for me in gaming, just something that I essentially did on a whim. Because there was no need to do it, I just wanted to do it. There were no. I mean, this is th you're talking about PS2. There's no achievements in the PS2. The only achievements are things you decide. Oh, I want to do this. And in my, in my view, because realistically, I am. A <laughs> it sounds a bit. It seems a bit weird for me to say this. I'm an old school gamer. I like kind of inventing things to do, which is why I'm doing why I've kind of somewhat invented hardcore farm sim. I don't know if somebody else has done it, but you know, I gave myself this challenge and I'm I'm working it. I'm like Derek Zoolander work it. Um But that's how I play a lot of games is I make up things that I need to do. Even Minecraft I completely ignore what you're supposed to do, find a big island and decide this is going to be flattened with stone tools. Then I do it. And then I stop playing Minecraft because I spent three weeks flattening an island. <laughs> I'm not even kidding, that's how I play Minecraft. Um, I think I'm going to leave the episode here. Uh, I don't know why I got the such a big tether because I'm just using the middle bit of it. I should have got the smaller one, but oh well. It's only a rental, it'll be fine. Um, you? So yeah, my frame rates are a lot better now. Uh, that just to just to remind you, if you weren't paying attention the first time, how I fixed the frame rate problem that I've been having where it was relatively low, I'll just bring up the counter again. 60 FPS solid. Easy. What I did was, up until now I've been recording with the game in windowed mode and I thought it was some problem with um, the display settings I had in terms of oh well maybe the post-processing is, is causing this. So I had a look and I have no post post-processing turned on. I haven't had it on for a while, by the looks of things. So I decided the only thing it could be was that the issue lay in how I'm playing the game, in the fact that I was playing windowed. Because my graphics card had to render the window and it was behind the window and the second screen which is still rendering but it seems to be doing a lot better job now 
So, um, yeah, if you got those weird frame rate spikes that I had, just switch on window mode. It should potentially fix the problem. Failing that, turn down your graphics a bit. Um, I'm going to end it here. I'm going to be back next time when I'll probably still be tedding and then uh, doing some wind drawing ready to uh, bail up some hay. Um, until then, I've been Rainbow Dave. You've been watching Farming Simulator 15. Uh, going hardcore in Bantica. Please comment, like, and subscribe and all that good stuff that uh, really helps out the channel. I know the lag has been annoying some of you guys. I have seen the comments about it, and I've fixed it, mostly. Um, any residual lag is, is directly caused by the game, and I have no control over it, and I apologize. Um, I'll see you next time when I'll be heading once again, ready to, we're well, getting everything w ready to become hay, and ready to windrow, and um, ready to bail. So until then, stay safe, and goodbye!